Welcome to part four of my brush lettering course on YouTube. In this part, we will be looking at joining up those brush lettered individual letters together to form words. So using the live viewers names as examples. Check out the bonus clip at the end as well, which shows how my lettering has evolved. Each individual letter has evolved from my first lettering attempts. It may help you in gaining confidence with your lettering from now to in the future. If you're just joining and you haven't seen part one, two and three, you'll find these on YouTube and they're really helpful to lead up to the stage of brush lettering. Okay, um, have you worked through those? Hopefully you've sort of just gone over those and started getting into the flow of the thick and thin lines. Um, so what I'd like you to do is to go through your name now. Now it's not going to be, don't panic, it's not going to be straight directly uh, onto paper without any guidance. I'm going to talk you, I'm going to walk you through all of the names actually. So we've got three people live here at the moment. So I'll do all three of your names just so you can see. So I'm going to do a guideline. Now, when I first started lettering, I always said pencil is as essential as a pen and a little guideline for you until you start doing brush lettering and sorry, bounce lettering. And until you can start doing these, um, without guidelines and your spacing comes naturally a guideline is really important i'm just going to make these darker so you can see them but i would suggest for you you keep it nice and light okay so let's see laura shall we do you your name first it's got an l in it but i will stick like i say i will stick to lowercase alphabet but the first letter, you can always use a large lowercase to make it look more capital E-esque. <laughs> um, so Laura, so look, keep, keep an eye on your alphabet sheet that we've just done. This may help you. If you've not already got a sort of style of uh, brush lettering from practicing or learning in the past, keep this to hand so you can look at each one. Um, I'll worry about spacing out later. We're just going to go for it here. Now, I know that the, we're working in pencil, by the way, sorry, first of all. So with Laura, it's L first. Um, the L is obviously just a nice, simple shape. So we'll write the L, then we'll write the A, and then the U, so it's nice and easy. Now the R, like I say, if you want to do that coming up and nice big loop, because we've not got much else going on at the top in the way of ascenders, we can make that a nice big loop. We've got lots of room. We can then bring that down to the baseline and finish with our A. Okay, so we've got our baseline. We've got the line, which is that X line where most of the letters are sitting, coming up to. The L is much taller. And now with our pencil, we can start looking at where we just add additions to some of those letters. So the L, for example, we want a nice big loop coming into the L, which I would do with a lot of my letters. So any with um, ascenders here, an L, an H, a B, for example, I'll give a nice big loop into it. And the A at the end, kind of a little tail there. Okay, hopefully nice and easy for you. By doing it in pencil, you're, look, you're probably more confident to start with. You can erase things, you can start um, you can start looking at spacing and things like that. Right, now we're going to go in with our pen over the top when you're happy with the spacing of that word. When you start here, little tip for you if you're confident, if you feel confident with doing the thick and thin and going th running through that alphabet that we did, and don't forget, please take it slowly. One of the biggest problems I've had that well, people have found in the past, besides the pen angles, is they're going too quickly and they don't realize how quickly they're going uh, and that's not giving you chance to think thick thin thick thin and it's not giving you chance to adjust the pressure and the angle of your hand now some people can brush letter really quickly um, and i must admit now i can do that but that's taken years i had did have to go very slowly to start with and it's just training yourself to slow down and enjoy it's quite um therapeutic doing the thick and thin usually I'd say okay connector 
or flourish at the top is going to be thin. I'm going to give you a little tip now and you can choose to ignore this for now if you'd rather concentrate on the other elements of your letters. But like I say, if you've built your confidence up over those that last sheet, you can start incorporating this in. This flourish at the top here, I'm going to do a thicker line into it. So I'm going to press down hard and then lift up. Okay, and that's given me a little bit of a bead on the end of my flourish. It's a bit of a stopper. Okay, so then I'm going to continue. Thin line, thick line. Can you hear that? I'm talking over it, but could you hear that pen? I don't know if you can hear that because my microphone's way above me. Um, I've sort of got that where it, it's it's catching on the paper and it's jittering. That's actually a nice noise. It actually means you're getting a nice thick line. So I don't know if you noticed there, I lifted, so when I came from the L, I stopped the L around here where I knew my A would be coming into there. I didn't try and go up to the top of the A and come back down, okay? I lifted my pen up, I went to the top of the A and I came back down then. And then at the top of the A here again, I've lifted up my pen, I've repositioned myself. And then I'm going to stop here. And I'm going to stop, I'm going to come back up, reposition, the top of the U. Now we need to keep our pen down if we can and start practicing that thick to thin. But if you do need to lift up, don't worry. Up to the top of the U and then back down. You can hear it squeaking, yeah. That's it, the, the squeak is lovely. It's a really nice noise. And it sounds really silly, doesn't it? It's also a nice noise. Uh, but yeah, it does mean that you're getting a nice thick line. So we'll do a thicker line on that R. The R comes down into the A. I hope it's not a horrible noise for you. Maybe it's one of those noises that makes you, your teeth itch, like fingers on a blackboard, but I like it. At least I know things are working. So there we go. There's your name, Laura. Now I would usually write that in a bounce lettery style. Uh, I can show you that actually in a second. But certainly as, as you're beginning, if you can keep all your letters on one line, it will make your life a lot easier. So uh, try and get the position right for you there. Hopefully you can see that okay there. Laura, all of you if you're doing Laura's name. So I'll just write Laura now how I would, just so you can see how it sort of evolved from what I've done there. So the, the L is very much the same. The A is similar, but a much lower tail on my A. The U is a bit smaller, so lower at the top, and then I do a much, I would do a much larger tail again. So I can do a flourish after the R, I don't have to join that, and then a small A. Remember we said about that blob at the beginning and at the end, so I've just pressed my pen down and I can do that here as well on the end of this flourish. You can go back and adjust things by the way, you don't have to do them straight away. So then, let me see, so that is just an if it's just really evolved from the straight line Laura that we've done at, at the beginning Sophie now this is a an S that I was going to show you in a moment I was actually going to show you that when you have a break how long have we been going ah yes yeah, so an hour so that's perfect so you can have a break in a moment we'll do these three names we'll have a break and I'll sh talk you through some um, some different letter formations but this is one that I was going to show you and that's an S I'll bring you back to the other screens while I do the entire word so my S is basically a normal S okay it's not it's not the sort that goes to a point and down and I'm going to make this larger because it's the first letter it is very much a basic S but my first curve my first loop is really big and then my second loop is tiny okay hopefully you can see that that's my preference for an s you don't have to exaggerate it as much as that but when you start getting that brush lettered sort of really modern style um, you can adapt that a little more if you want to so and then we're going to go I have to I have to remember we're just doing basic letters not um, not our bouncy letters at the moment so so far you've got that P in there so bring your P down nice and low and I've just curved that in slightly and the next bit 
start to come away from the very bottom do the curve and then up to the next letter and stop here because our H now we can do our basic H again I've curved that ever so slightly so when I come up I can come away from it and an I, I and E all very basic very simple okay so hopefully you can see that and you'll have something similar um, now with that S I'm going to do the same with with these S's I, I know it's not a downstroke and it goes against all of the um, rules that I've told you so far but I'm going to add that that little blob that I've added at the beginning of Laura I'm going to add to the S and I do this on all of my S's as well uh, I so I, I'm pressing down and I lift up and that's just for the very beginnings so can you see oh good Karen sorry I'm just reading your messages you love bounce lettering you find it really hard to stop it just looking messy I, the trick with it not looking messy Karen is um, not to overwork it so only pick and choose a few flourishes a few elements to lift up and a few elements to put down lower I'll talk through all of that more so when we talk through the flourishes so hopefully sometimes it's a it's a bit less is more with brush uh, with bounce lettering um, and also balance but that's a whole nother thing see I could do this we could we could do hours and hours of talking about lettering so I've got my little blob at the beginning you don't have to do that if you don't want to um, and then I'm just tapering it into my thin line so a thin line and then start making that a thicker line because I'm going downwards tapering it into the thin line there at the bottom I didn't change my pen did I so and then what I found as well if I'm doing a really really a piece that I want to be really really neat and I'm doing large letters sometimes I just find it as easy to do my thin letters my thin line sorry from another angle that's fine no one's gonna watch you do it no one's gonna say oh, she didn't do that the right correct correct direction don't worry as long as it all looks okay in the end so then we can go into our O. now you can do either the O that connects up and swoops round or you can do uh, with the one that I was doing on the practice sheet that we're doing right at the beginning the brush strokes sheet where you try and get a perfect circle it joins up very difficult um, there's lots of different ways that P so we come down with that that curve round and then bring up from the very end gradually coming round get to the top and then back down keep that that disc there reasonably small now it's entirely up to you if you want to leave that into your H you can or you can stop there and you can go into your H and not not connect it I'll bring it connected over like so my H will come down again up and down getting that nice transition between the thin and the thick the thick eye as well there and a nice thick little dot at the top of the eye so the dots are always nice and thick chunky because a dot would be part technically part of a down stroke so it'll be nice and thick and then around for the E and if you want to with the E you can just curl it over and press down to get a thick stroke at the end uh, so Sophie right now I really I showed you the S that I'd use I do a really tiny P, a nice big, sorry, a really tiny, I'd do a really tiny O and then I'd do, my H would be really flourished. Now I'll show you how to flourish H's and things later. And then the rest of your name really is kept quite simple, like so, okay? Have I spelt that right, Sophie? Yeah. Do you know some some names well a lot of names they look odd the longer you look at them my name because it's got so many vowels in just looks really unusual i'll keep looking at them and looking at them i think oh no it looks weird uh, let's have a go with karen because um k was my nemesis for years so i'm going to basically do a large k uh, sorry a small k but larger again like i did with the s and the l of course so I'm just going to do a nice, again I'm going to curve that downstroke 
So I've got this thing about curving those letters, okay, with the H, the P, the L, you notice they're all an, a curve to them. It just helps with that style, I think. Now the K, I'm going to do exactly as I showed you on the sheet where I'm going to bring it from here. I'm going to curve it to quite close to the base of the letter. And then I'm going to do a little flick, okay? A little flick out. And then a nice simple A. Let's do a different R for Karen, okay? You might find, Laura, this R might fit better in your name. And this is one my son did, and I was like, oh, it's so pretty, and it's so simple. So it's a basic R, so a straight line. Then we're going to come up from the bottom, and we're going to loop over and stop. But when we loop over, we're going to make that thicker. So like we did with the S here, we're going to thicken this bit here, okay? I don't know if you can see that, sorry, a bit harder for you. We're going to thick, thicken there. And then, if, you're, if you've got a letter um, before an E that you don't want to connect, so say you wanted to do P, E, and you didn't want to connect your P, or your K, or whatever it is, with the E, so write your E out, like so but i would start start that thin stroke from slightly the other side of the thick line okay so so you're sort of almost crossing across the thick line that will be a bit more visible when we've got our pen lines on there okay and the end so let me go over the karen so again nice thick stroke all the way down a little bit of a curve to it nice and easy now this is a downstroke, but you don't want to keep it thick all the way down because we start coming off to the side in a sideways direction. At this point here in the curve, you're going to want to start lessening the pressure. So nice and thick pressure and then lift up your pen as you get to that curve and keep the rest thin. And again, if you need to just neaten that up, you can. And then this tail, I'm going to actually keep thin and I'm going to press up. Now that is that is completely different to all of the rules about downward strokes, but it's a little bit of an extra um, addition for you for creating a K. Um, have have fun with your Ks. Have a bit of a, a mess around because, like I say, I mean I've practiced loads of these in the over the years, and I mean some people like to do them, flourish the things. It's entirely up to you. I think everyone gets their own style. Um, it will take you a little while to find yours. I mean, I'm still developing mine as well. And it's changing all the time, as you can see. I keep saying, oh, found, out, found another way of doing things. Right, so this R, and I, like I say, kudos to my son. He's 12 years old, and um, it was in the Easter holidays, or, or just before the Easter holidays, he was he did his schoolwork, and I think it was a lunchtime, and he said, I want to learn how to do brush lettering. I was like, darling... I, d I don't have my lunch, my work lunch break at the same time as his school lunch break so I said I haven't got much time but here's a few pointers practice this and he did this R and I was just like oh I love that I, I it was a I think it's just when you look at something more basically so it's a thick line down a nice basic thick line down and you can curve that a bit if you want to much like with the P we're going to come up from the base away loop over and as we get to the bottom just le lessen the pressure now you can make that easier if you want to by doing the thicker line so you can do the thick line and then you can do thick line and over it's entirely up to you but basically we're going thick line down and that is just a nice neat R rather than the flourishy one that we've done before it's entirely up to you you may prefer one to another um, the E, as I say, because we're now not connecting that R up, I'm going to bring my little thin line for my E beyond that thick line. So can you see that's just peeking out? And that just sort of shows it's a continuation of the word before. And then into the N, so it keeps it all nice and neat and together. Like so. Um, so there's a very basic Karen. Oh, sorry, I don't like to call you basic Karen. Um, so a nice curve. I'll do a nice small A coming down. Let's 
give you a different there we go a different R very different R with a lot of flourishing and then the N now I've bounced them around a little bit on all of these but you want to try and keep the balance I will talk about bounce and spacing and fitting letters together later on let's see so A's are fairly easy um, but I, I'll show you how I've evolved my A a little bit so I started with a basic A which I've been showing talking you through today where you bring the top up to the top so you're sort of joining and then you come back down again to the same height my A's then uh, evolved a little bit so that I was actually coming up and oops, much higher than um, this starting point. And as I come down, I'm keeping quite a gap as well. So really the angle changed for me and this changed with a few of my letters. So this angle is a lot more, it's almost a curve it's almost a curve that way rather than that way now okay and I found this with my D's my G's as well so if I did a D for you can you see that so I've got that slight curve and then my downstroke same with my G it's evolved so so this sort of shape I've changed a lot throughout the years but it's this gap between I found really improved um, my brush lettering as I moved through um, sort of changing my style and everything so as soon as I've, I've worked that out I was like ah okay things are starting to come together I'm starting to to see the style that I like now um, F's I've shown you already the F's that I like doing some people will prefer to do a simple F like so I don't think it looks like a letter I think it looks like an. I almost want to put another cross through it and things, uh, but I adore my favourite letter of all is to do this sort of F like this. Now you can adjust this, you can make it really big and fat at the top and really tiny there if you want to. And again, that's that very, very modern look that you're going for. Um, another letter that I've changed so. I've changed how I fall into letters as well. So, uh, so for example, L, B, all of these, I've now changed so that I usually flow into them. So I'll do the loop, and I did it on Laura on the name at the beginning, so I'll do this loop first. And you can do this on a B. You can do it on an H as well. Um, you can do it on so many letters okay just adding that small little loop so a lot of these are going to be extensions for you to take on one at a time if you want to adopt them I'd certainly say stick with the most basic brush letters until you've really got a grasp of everything and then start adding these additions in obviously not that <laughs> um, what else have we got S's I've shown I've briefly shown you the S's so you can do an S like so very simple but I think that can sometimes be a little bit confusing as to what it is some people do like they even connect into it a very simple s like so and that's fine you know it's your preference and I've shown you mine already so it's a really big and let me do a big stroke there it's a really big disc at the top and a really tiny disc at the bottom and I think it's more that sort of fun almost cartoony look um, and when you start adding in as well your thick line at the front and then your thick line at the bottom at the side as well so that that little starting point with the thick line it looks really pretty um, F's K's I've already shown you another one that I've adapted into really quite recently and I love the look of is N's and M's so I'll show you the N first and the M is just a, just another sort of uh, follow on from that so and then I'm going to curve my stem slightly and usually you've come up to the same sort of height and then down again to the same sort of height so very different now so I'm doing 
the curved stem. I'm coming up to a nice tall height and then I'm tailing off miles from the bottom. Okay, now this can be, sometimes it can be little like this. So it's almost more of a point and sometimes it really depends how I'm fitting it into the next letter and around other letters. You see, I'm not keeping it on the same line and I really like that. I'm almost stretching the letter out and making this more of a point. The M is then very much the same. And an M again was one of my nemesis for a while. So I'll do a reasonably tall first hump and then the second one will be exactly the same as the M. So I will take it off. It'll be a tiny hump. I and mean, some people I know, um, there's a lady, oh, what's her name? I've forgotten her name, but she does calligraphy, modern calligraphy with a dip pen. And her ends are basically like that. She, you wouldn't know it was even more than a squiggle uh, and it works within her style but it's a little bit of a uh, not quite as exaggerated as that so um, it's almost a bit of a, a, a zigzag line than a proper hump okay so there's a few little variations for you I hope you can come and join me for part five of this brush lettering course where we take your lettering to the next level by learning all about flourishing as always, I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel and I look forward to teaching you more about lettering and paper crafting in the future.